to Welcome be... Welcome back to the Divorce Club Aftermath. <laughs> Joshua and the wife uh, look for help because of their mental breakdown and the physical abuse. And the first place to run to is the church. And in, in the video, we see how, I love your smiles. I, I can see that you, you, really, you really watch the show and you really want to dissect that one. But what, uh, we see them rushing to the, to the church and the prophet comes in and plays a, a very, very major role, actually more than his role. What role, Deep role. <laughs> what role does the church or should the church play in a married couple's personal affairs? Sir, please. Um, I think that pastors should stay out of uh, um, um, people's bedrooms and uh, their homes is their own management. We can give them counsel. What they go create is their own thing. And um, looking at this particular one we're dissecting, I think um, my uh, uh, prophet friend, if I would call him uh, that, overreached. How um, getting into a place where Almost ab abducting somebody's wife? Uh, uh, no, I think uh, that's overreaching. <laughs> that is overreaching. I, uh, I was cringing when I looked at that and thinking, I think we're being misrepresented. So for the record, that's not the stereotype of all the pastors, but as much as I he's can. A, he's a special case. Not all pastors. Uh, I needed the guidance, um, and I'm glad I'm well You've guided. been married before, right? <laughs> When you had troubles and you couldn't find a way out with your husband, did you ever seek counsel from church? Or what role um, did the church play in your marriage? This is a little difficult to explain. I, um, I believe if a marriage has to repeatedly appear before counsel, it's done. Because the pastors, the clergy, they can come to your home even every day, but once they leave, Married people will attest. Once they leave, you, we can even smile, serve them nice juice. <laughs> okay, we've heard. But then once they leave, we'll go back to however we are feeling about each other. So the remotest, the core resolve should be between the marrieds. And I actually, given a circumstance, I, I discourage against going to the church or counselors. Because look, they are not married with you. I'll keep saying this, they are not married with you. And there's always an argument that will come up. You know that in front of the pastor, we both want to look like the good people. So let's, let's resort to common sense. Let's resort to reasonability. What is making us get to this point? So church should not play a role in people's personal affairs in their marriage. I think Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, that's 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 a little too hard, Gabby. That's a little too hard. I had a call. I know. I a call. I have to answer. Yeah. Not so she, She's not married yet. Um, but if you were to get married, yeah. would you get married in church? Would you get counseling from church? No. You wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. Okay. I would rather even meet like a relationship counselor, but. I'm not specifically like beholden to the church that I believe. Like I've seen so many problematic things with the church. You know, when I was watching the clip, right? In the beginning, I was like, when I realized like abuse had happened, I was like, oh, wow, this is actually quite impressive that the church are taking a stand for once <laughs> that they're protecting, you know, because the majority of the time, like almost all the women I've ever worked with and all the women I know who've ever dealt with the church is that whenever they face abuse, they go to the church, the church is like, forgive him. That is your husband, build him. You know, like they, they encourage gender-based violence. There's this, there's, there's this fake counseling that happens, but you continue seeing women being in very abusive relationships. I get your point, because but, of the church. but you're using the word they encourage. No, they do. No, they don't. They do. Okay, okay, you know, know what we're going to do? Let's, let's take a short break. break. I want us to look at the screen here. Oh let's watch a short clip from the last episode. And I have a couple of more questions for you. So let's, let's, have, a, let's have a look at the screen. You people fucking my wife! How dare you! I am innocent. I am innocent. Let me go! Why would you be touching my wife? Why would you be touching my wife? Let the world be vindicated me. What's wrong with you? Let the world be vindicated me. I am innocent. What kind of human being are you? 
Wow, welcome back. Uh, I am speechless. Uh, that was something. Bish, with the church and men of God characterized by so much sexual abuse and uh, so much immorality, how can people trust them or look up to them for counsel in their marriages? Uh, it's, it's, it's hard, it's rough. Um, very uncomfortable to be on this particular set <laughs> because you, you may have noticed those that follow me that I try not to bash them in the media's eyes. Um, but the reality is that the church has been rocked with a lot of scandals. And it's not just one particular segment you could talk about different denominations and, and situations like that. But, um, yeah, trust is challenged, you know, in the church when um, we, the clergy, get involved in such a situation. When I was, when, when I began to look at this particular one, I was thinking, oh, there's probably genuine uh, protection that is going on. Then all of a sudden it becomes creepy where he's pleading to see his wife, and then ultimately, uh, Pastor was having something with her? Uh, I don't know what, what else to say. I'm, 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 I'm ready to hear Anne's thoughts. <laughs> Listen, Christianity is a cult. No, I'm serious, it's a cult. No, it's, it's honestly, like, I genuinely believe it started from a very good point, but now what it's turned into, Already, even just the whole basis from the Bible, there's a lot of misogynistic things that happen in the Bible, and that force women to be in a certain standard. And part of it is where now we see women, we've been taught that the only place we can find salvation and truth and happiness is the church. And because of that, we're being manipulated, we're being sexually abused, we're being forced to stay in abusive relationships, we're being forced, our lives are completely taken over financially, mentally, physically, emotionally. And these pastors understand the power that they have. And genuinely, they're really evil human beings who are taking advantage of women and their need to want something higher and bigger than themselves. And they're taking advantage of them. And this is the situation that we're finding. And personally, that was, that was, but, but, that was but, crazy. But, but, but you've, it's you've not the first and it won't be the last. What, what, but you've used first, um, I can see your lenses. You see everything in feminism. You've used... And I think you should but, but try how, that too. How, how, do you, how do you defend such a situation um, where, look at where it began from, the mind control, um, how much the church got uh, into the couple's affairs, and then it led to the, to, to the prophet... I will. I will not having a thing with with, with, with the with the with the uh, lady. I, I will. I will not defend that kind. Um, I want to be able to say. I usually say um, at at church, um, don't leave your brains outside. I, I call it bring your game. You know, those of you who are in accountancy, help me with books of accountancy here. D don't just take everything that I say. I'm not the alpha and the omega. I am not the infallible one. Um, a lot of those who will, as in this situation, this wonderful uh, prophet, if I may borrow the word wonderful, is that he used... Do you believe he's wonderful, the prophet? Uh, is he wonderful? Uh, Listen, to me, the church has caused more harm to women, so there's nothing wonderful about any pastor at this moment. Like, it's great sparring with you, but I'm very skeptical of all of men. Uh, Listen... Listen, don't uh, label everybody. Um, ah, all right. There's don't... that generalization that you people hate so much that it's like the generalization is more important than the actual violence that is happening. No, in, in this particular situation, watch. Maybe this pastor doesn't even have somebody they're accountable to. For their protection, they need somebody they could run to, um, whether it's individuals, you know. Um, I'm put in check because my bishops um, um, I submit to will check uh, how things are, my marriage, my everything. I'm also submitted to one of the mother bodies, and so they, they check what's going on there. I'm accountable to them. So many times, uh, Coach David, it, it is where somebody is not accountable to anybody uh, that would land into dangerous situations like this. And so um, I think there's 
you have a point. Sometimes it's manipulation. I heard him quote the scriptures that were beneficial to him uh, and, and, and so on. And so, so how do we deal with the issue of accountability? Because it seems that's, that's the biggest problem. The church expects people to be accountable to them, men of God in particular. So, but then who are the men of God and the church accountable to? Because it seems... That you see, he expected Joshua to be accountable to him for his marriage, but he was he and his actions, right? But he was not accountable of any of his actions, which be, led him astray. Be, be careful. Be careful. Led him astray. Led who astray? He was astray the whole exactly. time. Exactly. Okay, no, okay. He was astray. astray. He's, he's, he's a astray. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. Next to the picture, to the word astray. This is astray. <laughs> exactly. exactly. The personification <laughs> of astray. So, so okay then. Then how? Who, who should men of God be accountable to? Because we've seen these issues rock rock the nation. Like you said, from different sects of Christianity, from, well, I don't want to mention them, but, you know, there's always a scandal coming up. And it seems to be worse as, as time goes by. Like she said, there's no stopping it in, because in, of the issue of accountability. So in, how do we draw the church to accountability in these times? First and foremost, in, in the governmental structure, in, when you register in a church, uh -huh. you must be able to... The, and the right place for churches is uh, uh, um, the Society Act of, 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 of the nation. So you go to a mother body. The mother body will actually ask you to have free endorsements for members of those mother bodies. And then they write the recommendation. You get registered. And that is why there's even deregistration of a society if it doesn't live up towards their constitution. So you mean to tell me there are people in the mother body that vouched for that predator? Um, <laughs> so meaning the mother body itself now is an issue because now who's holding it accountable for creating but, systems but who, that were having but such who, But who, who even says he's even registered? There are many people who are not registered. Mm. Yeah. So okay, that's so where the loophole is. He, he looks quite well to do. So meaning he has like a very, like, did you of see those bodyguards? tithing. <laughs> did you see that suit? That yes. doesn't look like a cheap suit. <laughs> yeah. So clearly he must be in this papa <laughs> bodies. Circles. And also, even if he isn't registered, meaning there is a mother body that's supposed to hold churches accountable. So why aren't they going in the communities? And ensuring that people are protected because now we're having children women being sexually abused look at what happened to that woman right so meaning there's a problem with the mother body it's either we cancel our churches or that mother body better start working oh my word watch and by the way there are in in zambia four major mother bodies you know there's uh, um, which represent the government now in the new setting we don't even have a ministry of religious affairs but Thank there's a God. department which is weird, but All that is in place. Why do we still see these things continue perpetrating in society? Should we come up with a different system of how we hold men of God and how we hold churches accountable for such things? Should you, we come up with a different system? Well, well firstly, we already have the structure. Okay. In the words of Anne, I think they need to be strengthened and probably given more authority. And being able to win those the governmental legal side, go governmental le legal side. They, by they, even more authority. What do you mean by whom? Um, by ourselves. It's people who make the structures. Thank you. It's a good thing you've gone to people. And sorry to cut you again, but I'll lose my thought. I've been trying to talk <laughs> from the first time you asked the question. So the first problem with uh, religion and Zambians are the people. I don't know if when they walk into churches, there's a hypnosis there. I don't know how they lose their common sense. It's not only the church to blame, but it's this crazy belief that a man or woman that carries a title, pastor, and pastor, pastor is not a degree, it's a title, please help me. It's like Mrs. or Mr. It simply means someone who's in charge of a church. Some pastors haven't even been to theology square, am I lying? Do, do you think oh that, 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 that thought is, is because of the label we have as Zambia as a Christian nation? Thank you. Is that, is, is that, is that, is that, even though people are- You, you, you sort of separated the church from the people, and so, so now, okay? You, you also, kind of a valid point. I think a part of it is also we have to understand our history, right? When we look at colonialism, when it came in, right, we were very spiritual beings, we're praying to the ancestors and stuff like that. But when colonialism came in, it was a choice of life and death. People were forced to be Christians. Yeah. They were being killed, they were being denied jobs, they were being denied opportunities. It was a matter of life and death, right? Did they put this thing of how 
traditional spirituality is evil and it must end. And that's how we see this Mongolia that you keep talking about. Oh, yeah. Because we've been forced, we've been taught there's only one way. And we keep putting it, our grandparents did it to our parents, our parents did it to us, and we're going to do it to our children too if we continue. And we have to stop it. Okay. So, sorry, my last question is, <laughs> I know this is a whole kind of word, but... Um, <laughs> and I can see it. <laughs> I, was, I was ready to see it, but very much. Here's a question I have, and this is the last question for us tonight, uh, today. Um, if the declaration as Zambia is a Christian nation were removed, do you think these problems like we just witnessed would happen? Do you think that would they happen or not? What are your thoughts? I feel it's, it's, it's more, it's more than just not declaring it. It's creating an accountable system. He's been talking about accountability. So the declaration is not the real No, it problem. needs to be removed. It needs to be removed. It's very useless. It's and embarrassing. It's, it's, caused, it's, it's embarrassing. It's useless. And we use it as a point to oppress people it's a veil and control people like i'll give an of... example of uh during calendar days right uh, zambia was the first country to ever legalize abortion in africa right we've had abortion illegal since 1972 and the entire time women could go to hospitals and get an abortion for social and economic reasons which is basically everything right when chilova decided to make zambia a christian nation doctors could now refuse to give women uh, abortions and now we have a huge and safe abortion problem in Zambia and because of the we are a Christian nation thing and so we should remove it because it is causing problems but it's not the biggest thing we lack accountability we don't want to be better people and we don't want to create proper systems that protect people I beg to differ <laughs> Christian, Christian nation is just um, too short a program to talk about covenants all right. <laughs> to, 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 I and, and, that there. I, oh, of course, <laughs> but in simplicity, it's uh, an aspiration, a standard of what we want to aspire to uh, as our moral standards. And so it is good to be there. Um, every nation decides what they will ascribe to. I think Afghanistan just um, declared their caliphate and that they were going to be a Muslim state. So largely, it's predominantly looks like that there's an emphasis that we have aspired to this from the Chiluba days to the current administration. Each one of them seems to aspire that generally Zambians prefer to be a Christian nation. And so even the current president and the former ones always emphasize that. So... Um, it's, I just think that, uh, it's, it's just politics. It's just politics. It's politics. <laughs> well, it, it worked, and so that's our aspiration. And is it really it working? Is it really working when we're having pastors literally abuse their members and force them to have unsafe abortions and they're destroying families? How is it working? Uh, no, no it's, it's it's not working, and so that one must be checked. That is because we're a Christian nation. We shouldn't accept that. Yeah. You see, your stance talking. is that the declaration is useless. Very. Preach, sister. Whether it's removed or not does not matter. What's the grassroots? What's happening on the ground? So what if we're a Christian nation? This is where people, it's too scandalous. And it's embarrassing to even say, oh, I'm Zambian. You mean this Christian nation that sins the most? Do, do, oh, no, no. What, watch this. You what's, say it did not mean. What, 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 <laughs> what, what's this? One of the reasons in simple history um, that made America to wait God, apart from slavery, <laughs> it is the fact that Christianity was something they upheld. And when they turned God out of their schools and out of their public lives, look at where they are. But should they really be the greatest by nation force? in the world? Okay, should like, it be like by like force? Put like, don't, don't lie and say that America was great when they picked God. There was slavery. They were raping people, they were killing people. America is still What's problematic. On the ground? It it's has nothing the same to do thing with as being a missus. You are married, as long as you are married, it's okay because Christianity supports marriage. So be miserable, be unhappy, but stay married. It doesn't work for me. Wow. This has been an amazing show. Your last thoughts to reviews. Um, I feel like we should start holding churches accountable. Women should understand that their bodies are their own and we shouldn't have to break ourselves just to be in marriages honestly and any man that hits you arrest him arrest him without even anything <laughs> just have him arrested at the first hit 
Yes, at the first hit, because he would do it again. Someone who harms you one time will never stop. They will continue and continue until they are 60 and 80 and they retired. And then now you're saying that's a powerful marriage. <laughs> My God, Gabby. Minds that the issues of counseling should not only be involved when someone's married, because some people are abusive in a marriage because of where they come from, because of who raised them. So get the background of people before you put them together. Someone could be hitting someone because that's what their father did, and their father didn't know better. A man, there are times Zifimbo Sawu saying, and a woman will sit there saying, oh, he loves me. He's jealous because he loves me. That is wrong. So let's deal with it from even before they are married. And the issue of a Christian nation, religiousness is not by force. Even all of the people we have here are not Christian. And when we talk about marriage, it doesn't only happen between two Christian people. So we should be open to other schools of thought. If we're going to restrict people to Christianity, we are going to make Christianity come out like the devil. Now people will second guess it. Why are Christians doing this? It's really different if that prophet who did that was a regular guy, not the clergy. Trust me, they wouldn't get this attention. But the shock is in. A man of God, has he then not met Jesus? What was God doing when this was happening? You see, <laughs> as we're outside, we're going to blame the name carriers and also the audits. These churches, please close them. Let's remain with maybe more bigger or traditional churches that have a procedure of following. Let's just be praying Bishop, our homes. How old. traditional is your church <laughs> before they come and close it down? <laughs> she's already going to, to, to the closing of, of, of the church. Some of them, some of them. Uh, All of them, sis. What are your thoughts, <laughs> Bish, as we wind up? I, listen, uh, I'm embarrassed um, at the actions of the prophet uh, that we've just watched. Uh, I think that we shouldn't be overreaching our authority in people's uh, homes and marriages. Um, stay away from that. That abduction was unnecessary. Um, that abortion and the things that surrounded it are, are quite embarrassing. But generally the church is doing more good than damage. Which and goods? Watch, watch this. <laughs> Which goods? It's, it's I want to see the good. The good. Yeah. Um, what good? For, for example, our church uh, supports orphans, takes them to school, he's, help He's going to start publicizing himself now. That's so. one church. <laughs> and, 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 and so on. That's so, one church. Uh, what? No. I mean, the Catholics basically prepare the you from The Catholics where there is a lot death. of sexual violence that happens to nuns. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> okay. 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 the end of life, no, 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 no. I I Forgive I me from even mentioning that. I wanted to give credit. <laughs> but, I, but I just wanted to be able to say the church is out there. It is meant to help, counsel, support system for people um, even when they're emotionally, physically abused that it should be a place of safety and um, um and in the words of Anne, again i repeat we need to grow more in accountability that the pastors must be accountable to somebody the churches must be accountable um to organizations set uh, legally so that we make sure that the churches are actually legal and accountable one last thought coach if there's whoever is watching this right now if there's an offense, we, we should, as Zambians, learn to separate sins from crimes. When it's a crime, report it to the police, not the senior pastor who, what, save the junior pastor. <laughs> report a crime to the legal affairs. Don't report crimes to the church. There's a difference between a sin and a crime. Zambians need to understand that. And I think to add off on what you're saying, well, they should report, even the system itself should ensure that it's accountable, that people are protected. Because people go and report and nothing happens. Nothing happens. Otherwise, we'll just be coming on Kazadi Divorce Club. <laughs> 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 wow, you've been watching the Divorce Club Aftermath. And I am David, your coach.